Okay. Now to the interesting part. <laughs> Reflection. Okay. I want to introduce myself, so that's fun. <laughs> Um, I don't want to bore you with my life history because, as my friend Karen McCall knows, it's uh, been quite interesting <laughs> throughout the years. Um, but anyway, I uh, just didn't want to take too long. I said it would be like a Netflix series and you'd have to keep going on and on and on. Sometimes boring, sometimes funny, sometimes pretty sad. But here's my very short synopsis of my religious life. 12 years of Catholic school, but they never taught me about the Bible. My parents were not religious at all. My mother took me to church on Sunday because I think you had to hand in a weekly donation of envelopes. I mean, they, they check you off by that. My dad and brothers never went as far as I can remember. Yet as grown-ups, they made a turnaround and actually went to church. Well, I still don't know why, but they came very religious later on. Bottom line is, I wasn't a good Catholic in the religion sense, religious sense. But later in life, my late 40s, my marriage fell apart, and my new life began. A blessing in disguise. I joined a divorce support group at St. John's in Manhattan and found a place I could make a difference. By helping others, I began to heal. Also, I wound up running the group for a few years. Actually, met my future and current husband, Tom. There, so it's a bonus. I got a lot out of that group. But that ended when I got married because they kicked us out. We didn't have an enrollment. <laughs> and so we couldn't run a group anymore. But when one door closes, another one opens. And life went on. Years later, when I retired from IBM in 2014, joining this church was on my bucket list. I had lived in West Saunders Park since 1983 and always thought it was cool to have a church we could walk to. I haven't walked here yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, best laid plans of mice and men, I never joined. <clears throat> that is until October 2019, when I attended Blessing of the Animals with my best friend here, Michelle's husband. And she was away, and he adopted a cat to surprise her. So we brought the cat and the dog to the Blessing. So, and then I met Anthony and Rosa, and they talked me into coming. Come, it's a great church, you know, it's not what you think. And I said, Yeah, I don't know. Still took me a couple of weeks, but I did finally show up on a day when you were outside. And I didn't even know what was going on out there, but Glenn, actually, Glenn Hines is one of my neighbors, so luckily he told me, Oh, we just start out here and then we're going to go to church. So, <laughs> All right, now, now, now I get it, you know, but um, so, you know, it was a, quite a way to get into the church by blessing the animals, and I've heard of that for that, and uh, let's see, and I said, I want to thank Rose and Anthony for bringing me to a place where I felt so accepted, he said, then I met Sybil. <laughs> I didn't want to pretend to be religious since I knew nothing about the Bible, etc. So I told her I am not religious. I just want to help others as I feel so fortunate. And she, after knowing me for a little bit, said, I am more religious than I know. What a nice thing to say. She made me feel so at ease and I could be myself. Thank you so much for the I am not good at interpreting these church lessons. But lesson two to today sparked something in me. I might be wrong in what it really says, but to me, it said that we all have good intentions and want to do good things, and it may take a while for us to act on it, but that doesn't mean we don't have the desire. But hopefully, we will in time complete our acts. This church is the perfect place to do good works. Our food ministry, Jack's food ministry, <laughs> is just one of those projects. Being part of the senior luncheons here has made her life richer. The love and satisfaction I get from being with everyone who wants my heart. I am so fortunate to be able to give my time and thinking to them and the future. <laughs> it's hard to explain, but I find that I'm a happy place. Thanks to all of you. I mean, all of you. 
My hope is now to have half the passion that Sybil has so that together we can all save this church. <coughs> My family finds it hard to believe that I have become a church leader. Unfortunately, I can't fit into all the clothes I saved when I was old and thought I might actually go to church. <laughs> but then I would never want to compete with the civil who can also live. And that's the conclusion. Because it would take a year to tell you my life. <laughs> but thank you all, because we've meant to, uh, you have no idea what the impact has been by all of you. And you really used to. <laughs> you know, it's just been a pleasure to be here, and it's not like the Catholic Church. It's friendly, it's family, and you care about each other. I've had so many messages and, and, and texts and, and emails about Tom and Karen and about him. I would never have gotten there in the Catholic Church. But I do have to tell you about the nightmare I had last night. <laughs> because I, in preparation for this, I got, I guess I got a little scared, and I dreamt that we went to another church, and I was there, and the place was massive, and filled with all these people, and they had different prayer books, and, every, and you guys were sitting behind me, and there was a big screen, and I was like, I said, are they giving out free Bibles to me? Because the place was packed, <laughs> and, and I just, I was like, oh my God, I didn't know what to do. And so, but I just want to tell you that because it's not as bad as I expected. <laughs> it's actually rewarding and I will do it again now that I've learned a few things, what to say next and what part in this, you know, in the can't wait to go to. But, you know, don't be afraid to do it. It's not that bad. And besides, we're amongst friends. If you live in the city, Nobody 